All right, you probably clicked on this video to learn how to rig a V1, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Um, if you clicked on this video and you don't know what a V1 is, I'm gonna tell you. All right. <laughs> Rigging. <laughs> Yakos to use. These are the Yakos. I'm gonna warn you. When I originally recorded this, I think, I don't know, I, I was like in a very zombie mood, a very dead monotone. So I apologize for being so boring. I'll try to use voiceovers to quicken up the pace so you can get, get out on the water. Short one in the front, longer one in the back. And so I'll go like this. And then before we start rigging it to the AMA, I'm going to just really quickly attach it to this so I can get the height right. The Tahitian way is two fingers, two fingers. Ow. I will adjust a little bit later, but for now this is fine. So two fingers, I'm gonna hold it down. Now this isn't like a full on really rigging it. This is just holding it in place. So I'll use one of my thinner rubbers and I'll just kind of like really quickly because I'm gonna redo it. Um, rig this, and it's literally just a placeholder, so you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. So when I, you know, I have it, it's enough, I'm putting my two fingers here, and then I'm taking this, I'm folding it in half, and I'm just sticking it under there. The reason why I don't put it all the way through is it's easier to unrig it. I can just pull it. Okay, so this one's on. Again, this is my shorter one. Now I'm gonna do the back of the boat. Sticker here, if you don't have a sticker, it's the more height. Two fingers, put it right there. If you don't do this and you just start attaching it to the AMA, it's really challenging um, because these guys are just like wiggling all over the place. So I think it's easiest to do it like this. Okay, so my two fingers are here. I'm making it a little bit tighter here. I'm folding it in half and I'm putting it under. Okay, so these guys are attached. Now, as you you're gonna figure this out as you are paddling more, but the V1 is a great for training because all canoes that they're like they sit in the water like a V, and that's how they're most efficient. With this boat, you can make adjustments on how high you want the AMA to sit or how low you want it to sit. I personally, my balance on the canoe is not great, and I tend to lean a lot onto the AMA. So for me. When I attach the AMA, I should add like a chalk or some height, like a little piece of wood here to like force the canoe to be even. But if you are balanced, you don't need to do that because you're already sitting even. You're not leaning against it. You're already sitting even. So like, how do I want to tow it based off of conditions? But we're gonna just do it really standard, so like very straight and um, pretty comfortable. You'll see that I'm rigging with rubbers. These are literally bike tire rubbers. Um, I like to use it thicker for when I'm rigging the Yako to the canoe. And then these thin ones, and also what I like temporarily held it with, are really good for attaching the Yako to the AMA. So this is like, the most, I don't know, technical part, but it's actually not that hard. So I like to make it, you'll see these guys, these horns. I like to make it at least as far as the outside horn. 
All right, so I have my rubber below and I have the two horns here. Okay, so you want it to be quite tight, otherwise it'll be a little bit more, it'll have a lot more wiggliness in the ocean. Okay, so holding it down, I'm gonna cross and then it's gonna come under the horn, okay? And then it's gonna come across under the horn and that's like the main movement. Some people like to do like, instead of going back over and across, they'll do one straight and then cross and then straight and then cross. Um, another thing I've seen people like to do is they do one around and then they tie it off. It's up to you. Um, for me, I'm gonna start crossing it over this way. So I'm gonna put my two fingers here because I'm getting ready to tie it off, just like over there. So my fingers are holding the place. And then this guy, I'm gonna fold in half, the loose end. It has this like thing right here. So when I wanna take it off, I just pull it. Okay, so this front is done. We're gonna do the same thing to the back. Okay, so this is matching to the horn, or it's a little bit further out. And then I'm holding it down with my finger. I'm kind of using my legs to keep it stabilized under the horn. And take your time, like if you don't feel like it's good, do it again. This one's a little bit longer. I do think this is like a better length. So I have my little loop. And it seems like kind of scary, but the rubber does have like enough friction that it holds it in place. Now the idea is like the further out you have it, I guess the more st stable, but this would be crazy. So I think this is like a pretty, pretty good marker. If you don't have a measuring tape, it's another way you can do it. I have, I use the thicker rubber here because there's not as many angles. Um, and then it's just crossed over and then I'm going to go over it. So I'm holding this with my hand, holding this tight. I'm going over it. Okay. And then you'll see there's like a little bit of overlap. I'm going to go on the outside of this horn. Okay. It's on the outside. And now I'm going to angle that way. Now, um, if you're not comfortable, you can start going under things at this point. So you could go under it like this if you're like worried about it coming loose or whatever. There really is so much friction that um, it's very unlikely that would happen. But if you just want that like peace of mind, you can pull it. And then I would keep going. You don't want anything loose hanging out. If you have more, you can go on to the other side of the horn and then come back. And now this is when I would put my finger here, okay, holding that space, pulling this a bit tight and then coming all the way through. If you have extra, you can do the fold in in half. If you don't, you can just let it go all the way through and then I let it all the way through underneath and I kind of pull it tight. I'm heating it up a bit. And that is... Okay, right back. okay, now we're going to use the measuring tape to make sure it's even. So the way to measure it is, you'll see a line runs down the middle of the canoe. Put your tape there. 
And then you're gonna run it to the middle of the omelet. So this is about 40 inches. So I have a, a placeholder here, but we'll see if it's right. It's, so we want this to be 40. I think it's 40 and a half right now. Yeah, it's 40 and a half, which is okay for it to be a little bit out, but I'd like, I'm gonna try to make it more even. Okay, now it's 40. So this is flush against it, it's flat against it. You could put um, wax between these for more grip. If you are in a canoe in the ocean, you should know how to rig it. Rigging it in this way and not popping things in does take more time. I think it's really good ocean knowledge to know how to rig it in this way. This is how sailors, how Polynesians, how voyagers have been doing it, not with rubbers, but they've been rigging. So I just, I think it's like, if you're gonna be on the water in a canoe, it's good to have this knowledge. Um, and you can feel really proud of yourself. Um, and you'll really get to know your boat and how you sit in a boat a lot better. And that's like the magical thing about the new one. Okay, so this one I have more so I can actually do the folded in half thing. So it's folded in half. Push it like that. Neaten it up. Flatten it. Pull this out a bit. So what's great about it this way, and you'll see how like tight the rubber holds on. What's great about this way is it's not going to come out, and then when you have to de-rig it, instead of like shoving it through, you can just pull this out. Okay, so there's two types of canoes that one can paddle by themselves, an OC one and a V one. OC ones are more popular. They have a skeg or a fin in the back of them, and you can control if it goes left, right, or straight. Um, using your feet that control the skeg or the fin, as I like to call it. The V ones are very special and dear to my heart. They uh, they don't have a fin. They don't have a skeg. Uh, they you control it by I was going to say using your mind, maybe a little bit, but by the way you paddle, the way you shift your weight, and the way you rig it can control um, how things work. It's definitely the canoe to use if you want a challenge. It's definitely the canoe to use if you like using your brain and if you like being frustrated. <laughs> um, but hopefully learning how to rig it will help with the frustration. Also, you feel like a total badass when you're rigging a canoe on your own instead of those, you know, OC1 people that are just like, whop, bang, ching, budding. Uh, it's often, you know, you'll be a little jealous that they're out in the water before you, but you'll still feel really, you know, uh, connected.